Hi, this is Gabriel Castro from ExoticWoodPen.com. In this video, um, I'm going to answer a couple of questions that I get asked periodically and having to do with bespoke pen turning is what tools do I need to get started? So in this video, I'm just going to basically show the type of tools that I use when I'm making my pens. Um, but if you have a metal lathe, you can do much better work and I think probably in a lot better time without as many mistakes. So you're going to need a mini lathe of sorts. This is a jet clone mini lathe that I've had for a while. I've made some upgrades. I use a four jaw chuck which you see here. I have a live center which is great. Um, I upgraded the tailstock from the metal one to this as a um, a metal bead on top, so that is rounded. It makes it good for nice, smooth, easy transitions across the work. So this is one of those dividers from Harbor Freight. As you can see, I have a whole bunch of uh, drawers there for different types of kits. And more importantly, what I use here the most is this right here for my clips, for my screws and whatnot, for my two start. These are 14 millimeter uh, double start tap and die. Let's see what that looks like. And I have a jig in there for my mandrel. This is tap and die for a, th a three start also a 14 millimeter tap and die I still have to make a mandrel for that to also get started with custom pen turning you're gonna need nibs section bits um, I have a whole bunch of other things in here also. This is where I keep part of my uh, taps and dies for other various operations and whatnot. You're also going to need a, a, some millimeter drill bits. And the one I use here, I bought this on Amazon. I use the seven millimeter drill bit from this kit. It was cheaper to buy the whole pack versus buying one. This is also from Penn State. This is a uh, Colet chuck system. And uh, I don't remember, probably around 100 bucks for this. I, I used the 3 quarter inch and then the 5 eighths uh, so far. And uh, I know a lot of people talk a lot of crap about uh, Penn State, but you know what? Uh, without putting a whole lot of money out, it's, I haven't had any issue with it. So one of the important things that you need is, well, I won't say important, I'm going to say crucial, is the floating tailstock die holder. It holds the die in here. Let me back that up. That holds the die to cut the threads on the body. I mean by that, that is this portion right here on the on the body where you screw in the cap. Last thing you want to do is try and screw in a cap like that and that being all wobbly. So no one would buy it. So you, that has to be absolutely crucial that that is dead on and that's what that does that makes sure that that is in perfect alignment with the rest of your lathe of course you're going to need a Jacobs chuck to go into your lathe um, this is also an M2 taper that goes into the tailstock see the handle uh, this is essential or crucial for uh, doing all your drilling when you're uh, cutting into your blanks and whatnot. 
and uh, without this you it would be almost almost impossible to drill out exactly center of your blanks in the drill press one of the the crucial pieces you're going to need is you're going to need a mandrel to hold the pieces you're going to work it on this is one of my homemade ones uh, this is for a double start tap and die uh, this is threaded here to hold the cap you've probably seen this in my other videos this will hold the cap from the outside this will hold the body from the inside here that's also double start and then where it's thin here this fits inside the cap and where that is that's also threaded inside and that holds the section so very crucial I've gone through a whole bunch of different types of mandrels made out of wood and whatnot and this is the best one I've come up with yet and uh, I need to make a new one when I make my triple start taps and dies pens. Another thing you're going to need is nibs. This is a Joe number six nib right here. Brand new. Um, I don't have the foam in there because I, I was pulling it out testing some stuff. But anyway, uh, you're looking at spending anywhere between 25 and up for a nib. Something else you're going to need is you're going to need um, ebonite or acrylic. If you're going to use wood, you have to sleeve it with uh, acrylic or ebonite. Ebonite is very expensive, so I wouldn't recommend sleeving it out with uh, ebonite because that's just a lot of money. Um, a 12 inch rod is going to run you 20 to 25 dollars and up. Last but not least is you're going to want some uh, carbide if you're going to be freehand turning on a wood lathe. Uh, carbide is really good for acrylics and for ebonite for cutting. So anyway, um, it's a healthy investment to get started in that. You're going to need a lot of, uh, a lot of money and some patience to work with it. So. Practice with uh, lesser quality materials, less expensive materials, like acrylic. Watch a lot of videos before you start turning. And uh, I hope this video was able to help. Have a good day.